What's up guys, Vibrate V here. And today we're talking about 3D printing. I think it's a really natural thing uh, if you are in FPV and you're flying with GoPro mounts uh, that you're gonna need some type of TPU parts, especially maybe even if um, you want some skids or something like that. So there's tons of versatility with 3D printing and FPV. Um, so I really wanted to just kind of break it down. Kind of, I'm still a beginner technically. I mean, I've had a printer for about two years, but I, all I can do is just print with it. And I really just tinkered a lot with my 3D printer. I really didn't have a lot of fun with actually making models and TP, making TPU and all that stuff. So I went ahead and asked Bango to send me this Ender 3 V2. This is a brand new printer from Creality. Um, it pretty much has all the upgrades of the Ender 3 um, and the Ender 3 Pro. And they added some little bells and whistles and they actually added um, a really nice 32-bit mainboard to this 3D printer as well. Um, so that's what really had me intrigued with this because my other printer, I was um, I upgraded everything on it. I upgraded the motherboard, I upgraded um, the extruder, and I still wasn't really satisfied with the prints. I mean, they never came out great. I think it's just because it was an old printer or maybe some of the something calibrated was not right with it. So got this printer, set it all up. I used some online guides. I didn't want to make online guides since this is really my first 3D printing video on here on YouTube. So I wanted to just kind of make sure I have a good foundation, looked up a lot of stuff on YouTube about setting this printer up and getting it set up. Um, tell you, I set it up and it was printing beautifully in about two to three hours. I mean, that's, I think that's typical for somebody maybe the first time, maybe a little longer. Four to five hours might take you a little longer. But the reason why they say, well, these things are easy to set up. Yes, they are easy to set up, but if you just set it up and screw everything together, like they say in the instructions, you will have some problems with it because you need to make sure that everything is square every, and your bed is leveled correctly. Um, there's like, actually it took me about 45 minutes just to level the bed, um, but I have it leveled and it's it prints beautifully. Um, so you have to really take your time when you're setting everything up, making sure everything is square, um, so then it can print reliably and well the first time. Um, but I've now printed tons and tons of stuff with this thing. I've been printing, I think I got this thing in September and I have been printing with this thing ever since. So I wanted to show you guys really mainly TPU uh, because that's what we mainly do. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys some of the TPU prints, how they came out. Um, and then um, naturally, if you have a 3D printer, and you're printing TPU and your wife or maybe your girlfriend or you want to print something special for somebody, you can make some awesome PLA stuff. PLA, TPU, even like they have wood grain type of filament. It's really, really awesome, actually. Um, so there's a lot of versatility, just not just doing drone stuff because I guarantee you, like I did, I started this with just wanting to do GoPro mounts and now I'm printing things like, literally, I made this thing on there. like. Impressive. I'm actually impressed with myself. I did this and impressed with this machine that was able to do this um, But let's go ahead and show you some of the prints that came out with So before we go over and look at the prints, let's go ahead and go over the specs of the 3d printer itself um, So this is the Creality Ender 3 v2 and it does have some upgrades from the original um, Pro versions and the original Ender 3 um, right off the bat, it does have that 32-bit mainboard, which will actually help you with firmware upgradability and also future-proofing your rig, since it does have the you know most update and fastest processors they have on 3D printers today, as far as hobby grade goes. And then we also do have this glass bed and perforated top, uh, which makes prints stick real easily to it. Um, it does have a redesigned hot end as well from the original. Um, it just looks real cleaned up and looks real um, neat and tidy. Um, we do have down here as this pullout drawer. They built that into the into the, there's a lot really common upgrade a lot of people did is put drawers underneath since it was just some kind of wasted space. Um, we also do have these tensioners. Uh, these blue uh, screw you can screw it in or out to tighten the belt on the Z or the Y axis um, and really it's just a really really nice printer uh, we do have some s smart re resume functions as well so if the power does go out um, it won't actually lose your print it'll just tell you to resume it and it does work actually pretty well um, you can actually upgrade this uh, firmware on this fairly easy by just popping an SD card with the firmware on it um, when you turn it on um, it does have uh, some silent drivers as well 
on the motherboard. Uh, so this is actually a lot quieter than a lot of older machines like my mono price did. Um, my mono price was pretty loud, um, but once you upgraded the drivers, which made a lot of the noise and the steppers, it really did make a huge difference with the better hardware inside the machine. Um, so I'm powering it up right now for you. Powers up fairly quick. The screen is a full LCD screen. Um, it is not touchscreen, unfortunately. But really, in this type of thing, I really prefer having the jog wheel opposed to having a touchscreen. Because I did have a touchscreen on my other uh, printer, and I just didn't find myself using it very much. So it's really easy. A lot The menus are pretty much everything is there. This is a custom, I uh, believe, built interface from Creality. So it's really nice that they put the effort in into this printer. Um, but now, without further ado, let's go ahead and go over... Um, looking at the 3D prints. All right, so I'm gonna start off with this GoPro mount that I printed for my, I believe this is a QAV Type R GoPro mount. And it did print it really, really well. I mean, there is some, um, a little bit of under extrusion here, um, but it did print it and it's usable. And it's, I mean, it's not beautiful because it still has a little bit of, you know, lines and stuff you can see. Um, I do have to work on my, some of my supports a little bit, I think, um, just make them more clean to be able to pull away. Um, but something like this, you printed actually like this, the orientation. And then so you have to have supports between here, and then you have to have supports over here on this side. Um, but it did print really, really well though, and a lot better than my other printer did. So I would definitely say this is a success. Then I went ahead and tried something small. I wanted something to see how the bed was and everything. So I printed these little side plates to the QRV type R frame, and they actually came out really, really well. Came out actually perfect. Um, so those are those. Now, really, I'm gonna show you another GoPro mount because this one came out perfect. Is this one right here? This is for the um, Nazgul HD, um, and yeah, so this thing printed beautifully. As you can see, the layer lines are perfect, perfect amount of everything. So, really, I'm just showing you why I got GoPro mounts because they're probably one of the hardest things to print in our hobby. Um, Everything else is fairly simple. Um, this is another Go, a GoPro session mount I made. Actually came out perfect. I think this is the best looking one of all of them. Um, so there's a lot of tweaking and stuff that you have to make in there, but I'm gonna leave you a link to Shep's um, channel because I'm using all of his default profiles for this. I pretty much just looked up his stuff, copied into his profiles, and this stuff has been printing beautiful. I actually never even tried this out of the box with Cura default profiles because I didn't really see the point to try it when I know somebody else already is, has the perfect settings. So that's where I start off with. <clears throat> so now we're going to move on to some PLA stuff. So I went ahead and printed my wife this vase right here. This vase actually didn't come out that well as you can see. Reason being is because apparently the g-code cannot keep up with I guess the processor. So it's causing it to pause momentarily and leave these little marks on the side. So I actually was able to get this print a lot better and I probably could keep going. Um, this is a new and improved version with me just tweaking the settings. So it's not really the printer, it's really just the G-code in Cura, I believe, is causing the issue, but it does print really nice. See that? This is a vase. So it's on vase mode. And this only does this in vase mode, by the way, where I made those little bumps. Everything else came out perfect. This is a real test. This is a iris eye, I believe, and you can go ahead and move it, believe it or not, see? So this tells you if the clearances are perfect on your printer or whatever, how your build plate is, how bad it is. You have to clip these little clips off the back and then um, it moves. So this is a really cool, cool setup here. So no more PLA, this is a little model that came in the box came out really, really beautiful. When I seen this print, this I think this is the first thing I printed. And it came out, well, I was like, wow, really amazed with it. So then I went ahead and moved over to the Benchy, real standard Benchy. And you can see here, it goes right over the overhangs up top here. If I can get the focus here, it did a little bit. So that tells you that, you know, it needs supports there. Um, but, and then everything else came out beautifully. Really impressed with it. Now for my personal project that I had to make is my Mando blaster, blaster. 
Let me zoom out so you can see this whole thing. Now I painted it and everything. So this is like a cosplay type of gun. Um, came out really, really beautifully. Really impressed with it actually. Now for my pride and joy that I just finished literally this week is my Mandalorian helmet. Now I didn't print this in here. This was uh, some type of uh, plexiglass you have to purchase online and get it shipped to you and, and you kind of have the Velcro inside. Um, but yeah, this thing, I printed it in pieces. So I'll show you some pictures of it, just kind of me building it along the way. I do have to work on my body work a little bit so you can still kind of see the seams here. From That's from me. I just need to work better. I, I'm kind of impatient, so I was kind of done sanding it down. Um, but it's good enough for me. I like it a lot. Love it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys some how it runs, the sound. It is a little loud when it gets the fans on. So the on switch is back here behind the power supply. Didn't really, oh, I'm actually was on the front or on the side somewhere. It's easy accessible, so it's kind of a pain in the butt with the reach over the table. Um, I do like this screen a lot. This is what really kind of sold me on this because I just like the screen. I like it. It looks modern. It um, doesn't look like something from 1980, honestly. Um, and really to print, we just load up our STL on our SD card and I'll be making a video on all this stuff because we are going to be doing a lot of 3D printing videos, I think, hopefully. Um, but you load your STL on there, what you want to print. Go ahead and go over here to go to print. Yep, the bed took about five minutes or so. Now it's gonna go ahead and home the bed. And that's gonna take a little while since it was kind of high. And now it's gonna purge. So it's gonna put a little strip down the side there to purge the nozzle. And now it's gonna start printing. If your first layer goes down, then you're, you're pretty almost successful to be able to print. Um, but I'm not going to let this print finish because this thing took about a day. This was a mask I made for my brother, which I already gave away. So let's go ahead and wrap up the video and uh, tell you my thoughts. All right, so I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on the Ender 3 V2 from Creality. I love this printer. I absolutely love it. It actually gave me another understanding for printing and making models, like literally. But that's not really the point of the video. The point of the video is yes, you can print Go, you can print GoPro mounts all day, anything you want pretty much on a quadcopter at a TPU on this printer out of the box. Now, if you noticed on this video, I did have a few little upgrades to it. Now, while I was assembling it, it does not affect the build quality at all. I did replace the coupler that is on the extruder because that was recommended from everybody on YouTube. Um, also, I did put a Bowden tube in it since it came with that. But other than that, the printer has is totally stock. Um, and that just really just print, you know, helps me having a headache down the road if something gets clogged. Because it is, they've told me in the past that these little um, things are still using the same type of coupler, um, which can cause it to clog or jam and have some issues with it in the extruder. So I went ahead and just avoided that issue altogether, and it was literally like $10 on Amazon. Um, and then I also actually did, because I did upgrade the bed springs, because while assembling it, I had the bed springs already from my other one, so I just put those in there, so I didn't have to go ahead and go back and do it. Um, but this thing does print TPU beautifully. Um, out of the box, don't hear that jargon about you need a direct driver extruder. I kind of believed it too when I had my mono price. I believe that you know, you had to have a direct drive extruder to be able to print TPU. That is totally incorrect. TPU, maybe if you're printing Ninja Flex, which is extremely flexible filament, maybe you'll have some problems. But if you're using Zane Smart uh, TPU, which I think mostly everybody in the FPV industry is when they're making GoPro mounts, if they're using Zane Smart TPU, then you're going to have an awesome, awesome experience because it is not as flexible, but it's not like, like a spaghetti string. Um, 
but I'm really, really impressed with this printer. And I'll be leaving a link to this printer down below. Uh, I do want to thank Banggood for sending this out to me for review and uh, help me out so I can go ahead and get make some 3D printing videos for you guys. Um, so as I'm learning, because I want to get into creating actual 3D models, I can print them, it's easy. And I really, you know, understand kind of a lot of the settings, but really if you're coming here out of the box and you know how to print this, set this thing up and make it square and set it up correctly, which I'll be leaving links to those set of videos, to those creators down below as well. Um, check them out as well. Um, but I'll be leaving a link to this down below. It is an affiliate link. This helps support the channel, helps support me. Um, but this is Viper FPV and I appreciate you guys watching this video and I hope you subscribe and give this video a like if you found this video helpful. Um, but this is Viper FPV and I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.